Hello, my name is Kiri and I'm a flower farmer here in Western Washington in Zone 8A. Welcome to part two of a five-part series where I talk about flower farm accounting. So if you haven't checked out the first part, go ahead and check that out. It does feed into this one, uh, but this video is all about financial statements. Before we jump into this, just a friendly reminder, I do have an accounting and tax administration background, but I am not a licensed CPA or lawyer, and I am not your CPA or lawyer. So if you do have any specific questions on this generalized information that I'm providing, go talk to a professional about your specific situation. So let's jump into it. So what are financial statements? Financial statements show the health of your business. They show information about your company's revenues, expenses, what it owns, what it owes, profitability, and things like that. The important thing to remember about financial statements is who the end user typically is, and that's usually external users. So that would be like if your bank is considering lending you money for a tractor, they're going to want to see some financial statements to see okay, how healthy is your company, are you going to be able to pay back this loan. Um, other people that might use financial statements include investors if you're looking to have somebody invest in your company. Um, and you can use them as well to figure out what's going on in your business. Your reports are only as good as the data that you input into them, so if you're not keeping your books organized and maintained and importing good information, then you're going to get out not good information into your reports. So make sure you're keeping up on your bookkeeping. So when people think about accounting, typically financial statements is the first thing that they think of and um, there's so many different aspects to accounting, uh, but financial statements get a lot of attention uh, and for good measure. So if you have heard about GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, those standards apply here to our financial statements. So there's a lot of rules about how financial statements should be set up, which we'll talk about a little bit in this video. So before we jump into figuring out what the financial statements are and what they tell us, I want to let you know about something that is fundamental to accounting. It's the accounting equation. The basic accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Accounting follows a double entry system. So anytime you do an entry, it's going to affect two different accounts and they need to balance this formula. If you heard about people balancing the books and talking about these different aspects, this is what they're talking about. So if you can follow this basic algebra, you can get your books to balance. There's some quirks when you get into some really weird things, but uh, if you're just cash, cash a basis, small scale flower farm, you're not going to have to worry about that stuff. <laughs> and this accounting equation can be expanded to include a bunch of different accounts. I'll show you here like a diagram of how it all feeds into itself, but you can just keep it really simple. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And make sure that it's balanced. So what are assets? Assets represent what the company owns, and they can be tangible or intangible, but as a flower farmer, we're probably talking about tangible assets. That would be your tools, your tractor, your car even, if that's owned by the business. Those are assets. Liabilities are anything that your business owes. So if you own a car but you have a loan on that car, that's a liability. Other liabilities could be um, subscriptions. If you do pre-orders in fall but you're not fulfilling your subscriptions until spring, that is technically a liability um, because you owe somebody something. You owe them flowers because you took their money. Um, if you're cash basis, it's probably not going to show up on your books. Um, but just something to keep in mind on, on how that works. You can further break down assets and liabilities into current or long term. Current is anything that is going to be satisfied or owed or due within one year and then long term is anything longer than that. So typically accounts payable or accounts receivable are considered short term assets and liabilities. Long term assets would be like a tractor, something that's going to last a long time. So both liabilities and owner's equity represent how the business funds itself and its assets. So that's why they add up together to equal that. So if you're financing your farm with debt, that's going to show up as a liability. And if you're financing that with owner investments, it's going to show up as owner's equity. All right, let's talk about the four main financial statements. So those are the balance sheet, 
the income statement, which is also known as the profit and loss statement, the statement of cash flows, and the statement of owner's equity. And that is often rolled up into the balance sheet. Uh, but we'll do a deep dive into each of those here. So a balance sheet summarizes all of the business's assets and liabilities. Balance sheets are a snapshot. So you run that report and it will give you as of that date what the business owes and what it owns. So this balance sheet is essentially the accounting formula all usually displayed. <laughs> the statement of owner's equity or statement of shareholder's equity, depending on the ownership structure of the business, uh, is typically a standalone statement if the company is pretty large. But for small scale businesses, you know, like a startup flower farm, uh, the, the statement of owner's equity is typically going to be tacked onto the bottom of the balance sheet. Basically, it just shows what the owners own at the end of the day. So if you sold everything, got rid of all of your assets and all of your liabilities, what would you have? So when your business makes a profit, owner's equity is positive, and when it takes a loss, owner's equity is negative. That would be for sustained losses. So you'll notice here when we look at uh, the balance sheet and owner's equity together, it's not showing expenses or sales, and that's because that is a part of the income statement which rolls up into this statement. The income statement, which is also known as the profit and loss statement, shows your sales and expenses over a period of time. So typically you will look at that monthly, quarterly, or annually. This can be helpful to do year over year or quarter over quarter comparisons. You can also use the information on your income statement to compare to your budget. Oftentimes we're looking at the income statement because we want to try to control our expenses and try to increase our sales. So an income statement starts with your sales for the period and then it subtracts out all the expenses to end up at your net income. And the types of expenses typically are cost of goods sold, which are those expenses that directly relate to the products that you're selling. So that would be your bulbs, your seeds, fertilizer, compost, floral design supplies, all those things that end up in the final product that you're giving to your customer are going to go in your COGS. And then you're gonna subtract out other expenses such as office supplies or landscape fabric. Those kinds of things are gonna go into these other administrative and general expenses. You start with your sales, subtract out all your expenses and you end up at net income which that is an amount that is rolled up into your retained earnings, which goes back over to the statement of shareholders' equity or owners' equity. The final statement is the statement of cash flows. And if you're running your business on an accrual basis, this statement's going to be really important. So you may be reporting a sale when you actually haven't collected the cash from the customer, and the statement of cash flows is actually going to show how much money that you have in your pocket. <laughs> or really what it's telling you is how much cash has entered your business over a period of time. And then how much you've spent and then how much you have left over. But if you're running your business on a cash basis, so you're only reporting sales when you actually collect cash and you're only reporting expenses when you actually pay cash, then the statement of cash flows pretty much is reflected in your income statement. So you don't have to worry about it at all. So these financial statements are great. You know, they show you the numbers, but where you can take this to the next level is using ratios to analyze your reports. There's all kinds of different ratios, but if you're a small business and you're a cash basis and you don't have a bunch of assets, then I'm going to focus here on two ratios that really are going to be impactful for you. So that's gross profit margin and net profit margin. Gross profit margin is the company's sales minus your cost of goods. And it's expressed as a percentage of sales. But another way, gross margin tells you how much money you keep after you consider your materials and labor costs. The higher your gross margin is, the more money you have to cover other expenses and obligations such as taxes or any kinds of fixed costs or money that you'll have left over to reinvest in your business. You can improve your gross margin by reducing your seed costs by improving the efficiency in harvesting and arranging your flowers, or you can raise your selling price so that you can generate more sales. But you gotta be a little bit careful with that because just because you're going to raise the price doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have more sales because some of your customers who are a little bit more price sensitive will just decide not to buy anymore. 
So you have to balance your volume with your pricing. I had a hard time finding the industry standard for farmers or farmer florists, uh, but I could find the industry standard for florists. So I'm going to take an educated guesstimate that farmer florists might have a slightly lower profit margin just because of all the inputs, um, but I'm still going for this goal. Uh, so the industry standard for the gross profit margin for florists is 60 to 70 percent. So if you're achieving that, good for you. I am not. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. The second most important analysis that we can do is the net profit margin analysis. So this is the final amount of money that you have left over divided by how much sales you made. And then you multiply that one by 100 to get the percentage. Net profit margin it takes into account all of the costs that you have incurred. So it is the most comprehensive and conservative measure of your business's profitability. So this is going to consider things like overhead, um, your fixed costs, you know, like building your stand and buying all other things that you need to run your business and taxes and things like that. When you express this as a percentage, it shows how much profit every dollar that you generate makes for your business. We want to have larger profit margins so that we can have more money to either take home as the owner or to reinvest into the business. The industry standard for florists is 30 to 40 percent. So if you can hit that, that is a great goal. All right, now that we have covered bookkeeping and financial statements, let's move on to taxes and how these two things can help you file your taxes easily and efficiently. So that next video will be linked right here once it comes out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.